Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David, you're home. How wonderful. You said five o'clock. And five o'clock it is. I broke my neck to make it. Everything better be ready. Everything is ready. Fritz is coming to help with the bags. They're all in a bunch in the living room. Well, how does it feel to be moving into your own apartment, Mrs. Norton? Marvelous. Most marvelous thing that ever happened to me. Most? Next to getting married, of course. Oh. So now we gather up our small caravan, and in the dimming light of afternoon, <laughs> we take leave of the beautiful land of apartment 2E. <laughs> Turning our face to the sunset, we say goodbye to the natives. Goodbye. 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 <laughs> what did the name say? David, you're... <laughs> <laughs> I was up in the apartment this afternoon and the sun was coming in and... Oh, it looked beautiful. Beautiful and empty. I wish it had looked empty. It was full of painters' buckets and brushes and ladders and canvases and stuff. Is that all? Didn't the beds come? The mattresses and the box springs came. Of course, we have our chair, so we're practically set. We can move right in. Oh, yes... Pots and pans arrived, too. How'd the painting look? I loved the colors we picked. It was hard to tell, though. It was wet, and the colors underneath kept peeking through. There were two painters, a tall one and a short one. Were they almost finished? They didn't look almost finished to me, but they promised they would be by five. I think I'll call Mama. What for? Why don't you ask her to come and watch for herself? She offered, but I said no. She'd want to do all the work of unpacking and putting <laughs> away, and she'd get all tired out. We'll have her come over later tonight when it's all set. That's all right. wonder where Fritz is. He'll be along. Oh, the new tenant's coming in at six. I hope he likes it here. He's only a man. What's the matter with that? I mean, he's not married. I don't see how a man lives in an apartment not married. Lots of men do. Poor things. I suppose they have to live somewhere, though. Hello, Mama. We're all set to go any minute. You know it's clean here. You saw it. How could I mess it up in an hour? Listen, will you come over later? We'll call you from upstairs when we're in. Give her my love. David says give you his love. Oh, there's Fritz now. Goodbye. And be good. You answer it, and I'll go put on my hat and coat. You don't need to. You're just moving upstairs to the 12th floor, remember? Oh, Fritz. We're all ready for you. Ah, Mr. Norton, I I don't know how to tell you. Hello, Fritz. We're right on schedule. Uh, Mrs. Norton, the painter's... They are not finished. They aren't, but they promised, David. They promised. Now, what happened, Fritz? I was up there this afternoon. They said they'd... One be... had to go home. Oh, go home in the middle of the afternoon? The tall one or the short one? The short one. Oh, the short one. He was the only good one. How much did they get done, Fritz? You know, the bedroom almost, the living room almost, the, the kitchen and the hall. That's about as much as they'd done this afternoon. Is any of it dry? No, oh, all is wet and step ladders and pins all over. It always happens, especially these days. Mm. What can you do? Can't people do something? They haven't been able to so far. They promised they finish tomorrow, Mrs. Norton. They'd better. I'm not going to live with two painters. Well, I guess we might as well get started. Now, where will you go? Upstairs, of course. Where else? But you can't go upstairs to move in now. Why not? We won't touch anything. And if the kitchen's finished, we can put all the bags in there. But, darling, the smell of paint is terrible. Oh, don't I know. And the heat is soft, and the windows, they must all be closed. Why must they be? So the paint won't get all sooty before it's dry. Oh. Well, we'll just have to smother, that's all. It's not the way I expected to move, but it can't be helped. Mr. Norton, I don't don't, think that... I don't think so either, Claudia. We cannot move into that apartment tonight. I don't mind a little paint and stuffiness. Really, I don't. Well, I do. Besides, the painters come in early. All these boxes and bags and beds will be in the way. We're not moving tonight. That's impossible. Impossible or not, we'll have to. We can't stay here, can we, Fritz? Not here. The, the new tenant called. He will be here at six. 
I'm so sorry, Mrs. Norton. Oh, it's not your fault, Fritz. And don't give it a second thought, Fritz. We'll be out of here long before six. Well, you leave the bags, Mr. Norton. I will put them downstairs in the storage. Fine. Uh, they'll be right here in the living room. Well, I come back up. Well, goodbye, Fritz. Goodbye, Fritz. Goodbye. Well, now what? No, oh, darling, it's not that tragic. I know it isn't tragic. I don't mind too much, really. I guess we can't always have everything just the way we want. Now... What hotel would you like to stay at? Hotel? Can you move into a hotel just like that? Why not? That's what hotels are for. We're not from out of town. I'll feel funny. You'll feel wonderful. We'll have dinner downstairs, get a room that overlooks the park, have breakfast sent up. You'll never want to leave. Darling, it's so expensive. Oh, it's not so bad. Besides, there's no choice. There isn't? None. Well... We'll be kind of exciting, like another honeymoon. <laughs> a short one, short but sweet. Oh, I wish I hadn't packed my best nightgown. I'll buy you another one on the way. And a pair of slippers and a lacy negligee. Anything you want. This is your night, Mrs. Norton. We're celebrate, not moving. It's a date. Quick, call the hotel, David. All right, now let's see. I'll call the uh, Gorham. The Gorham? David, you don't have to lose your head. The Gorham, it is. For my wife, the best. I know the number of some of our... Uh, best out-of-town clients go there. Hello. Uh, room clerk, please. Uh, thanks. I'll hold on. David, I just thought of something. You can't get rooms in hotels these That's days. That's just a rumor. You can always get one room and a bath. Well, I hope you're right. Oh, uh, he- hello. I'd uh, like to make a reservation for a room and a bath for tonight. What's that? No, not for a week from tonight. For tonight. Oh. No, I don't care to send my bags and wait in the lobby. Thank you. Uh, Say, uh, can you suggest any other hotel that might be able to take us in? Can't, eh? It's as bad as that. Well, goodbye. No room? He says people are sitting up in the lobby. Oh. Well, here, give me that book. I have an idea. Try and sound as if you're from out of town. Maybe that'll help. Any special part of the country? Just sound distinguished. Well, that's a big order. The Slater. Here we are. I should have called the Slater in the first place. They've got thousands of rooms, and they pride themselves on their hospitality. David, it's getting to be almost six o'clock. Now, now don't rush me. Hmm. Hello? Slater Hotel? Uh, kindly connect me with the room clerk, please. I desire to make a reservation for my wife and myself. With a bath, please. Will you be able to keep it up all night? Until we get in that room, I will. Uh, hello? Oh, he- he- hello. Uh, this here is uh, Mr. Norton. Uh, Mr. Gaylord Ravenel Norton. <laughs> I desire to make a room reservation for myself and my wife with a bath for this here evening, please, sir. What's that you say, sir? Well, sir, it's either tonight or it's never. <laughs> is this northern hospitality? Well, you come down south, son, and I- Now, come now, son. Certainly you have one room in that big hotel. Not until a week from next Thursday, huh? No, I don't want a room a week from next Thursday. I want it tonight. Oh, you'll take a reservation, huh? My name? Senator Claghorn, son. Senator Claghorn. (laughs) What's the matter with us, David? Doesn't anybody love us? Well, they love us all right. They want us to sleep on a park bench. Mm -hmm. Might be nice, but a little cold for a southern gentleman and his bride. <laughs> Give me that book. I'll get us a room It's or... hopeless, and you know it. There's just no room anywhere at such short notice. Well, what do other people do? Stay with relatives. We haven't got any relatives. We've got Aunt Louisa. No, uh, I'm not going to Aunt Louisa. Neither am I. But why not Mama? Mama? What does she have to do with this? Everything. She's gotten rid of the extra bed and getting the sofa covered, so we can't stay there with her. All right, then. We can't stay with her, but we'll not go to Aunt Louise's. David, listen to me. We will go to Mama's and send Mama to Aunt Louise's. Why should Mother have to stay at Aunt Louise's if I don't want to? Now, you leave this to me. Mama won't mind. I know it. As a matter of fact, she'll probably enjoy it. your new apartment. Because we came to visit you. A fine time to visit. Oh, we thought so. That's why we're visiting. 
Well, aren't you going to ask us to sit down? Sit down? Sit down. I'm sitting down. Well, now that we're all sitting down, Claudia, what are you and David and Kat doing here? We just told you, visiting. If you two don't start acting like nincompoops, I'll send you back to your apartment. You should be there anyway. You're very hospitable. What's the matter? Don't you like it? Mm, we like it better here. Well, don't feel as if you have to sit around and talk to me. Run along. I can help you. I'll come over later. We won't be there. You won't? No. Oh, going out this evening? Yes, we thought we'd go out. After all, just because we've got an apartment doesn't mean we have to stay in. <laughs> like two birds in a cage. <laughs> you two birds belong in a cage. Mommy, you better hurry. You'll be late. I will. You will? Late to dinner. You're going out to dinner. I am? You am. <laughs> My dinner is in the stove, thank you, all ready for me. Good, then Claudia won't have to cook. I'll get your hat. I don't want my hat. You'd better wear it, Mother. You don't want to catch cold. David, where am I going to, to catch cold? Mm, on your way to Aunt Louise's. You're having dinner with her, of course. Dinner? And spend the night. Oh, the night, too, I see. Does Aunt Louisa by any chance know Certainly it? Certainly she knows it. I invited you. Thank you very much. Now... What is this all about? Still doesn't understand, David. Very slow-witted, your mother. Explain to her. We are orphans in the night, Mama. If you do not open up your big heart to us, we will have to sleep on a park bench. The painters like the apartment so much they decided to stay another day. You're out of one apartment and not in the other. <laughs> See, she's not so slow-witted, David. It just takes a little time. <laughs> You've decided to come home to your poor old mother's doorstep. And then send our poor old mother over to Aunt Louisa's doorstep. And uh, what's the matter with your going there? Aunt Louisa has asthma and we have Shakespeare. And there's not a hotel in New York that'll have us. I wish we could invite you to stay with us here, but we haven't got the room. I wouldn't spend another night with you two for a million dollars. David, give her a million dollars. Have you got a blank check, Mother? <laughs> you better hurry, Mom. It's getting late. Remember, you're invited for dinner. And we're invited for dinner tomorrow night. Serves you right. Well, of all the ingratitude. Here's your hat. Claudia, stop messing my hair. Mm, looks nice over one eye. Not your hair, your hat. Here's your coat. Uh, put your chin up, Mother. I'll button it. <laughs> Not your chin, your coat. Get away from me. We're only trying to help. I'm going. I can't get away fast enough. Mama, call us when you get there. You don't feel as if we'd driven you out. Oh, no. Why should I feel that? Well, you just might. Good night, Mama. Don't cross the streets when the lights are green. And, oh, Mama. What now? I've got an idea. Why don't you come over here for breakfast in the morning? Yes, don't stand on formality. Just drop in, Mama, as if the place belonged to you. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. Unless you're so busy that you can't get out of the house, you'll certainly do a large part of your Thanksgiving marketing today to avoid the last-minute rush. When you're buying the food and fixings, don't forget to ask for that case of Coca-Cola, which plays such a large part in all gala days. And remember, you can shop refreshed if you take time to stop at that familiar red cooler for a delicious ice-cold Coke. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir and remember. Whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. <laughs>